Welcome back to Vice Grip Garage and day three of Hot Rod Power Tour. As you guys heard, Cat Farm Crew Cab, she's down. We've only got second gear. We've tried everything we can do other than basically drop the transmission, which we've got my wife and friends with. We're not really in that mode for Power Tour. Sick week, drag week, eh, that's probably different. But I got a plan. I just bought a truck, sight unseen. It's an old Ford pickup. So I'm gonna jump in with Chad and Longmire. We're gonna cruise over to this guy's house. It's kind of on the way. See what I bought and see if it's gonna make the remainder of the trip. I think I got like 800 miles or something like that left. It's gonna be interesting, but it's what we got. So we emptied out the cat farm. We've got a jack, ramps, which I had to use yesterday, a little tool kit. Of course, we have more coolers than anything. It's the important stuff. We finally put gas in our rescue jug yesterday, now that we're halfway through the trip. There's some other accoutrements in there. This car, no issues. So I think we're gonna leave this one here. Front desk has the keys. Buddy Daniel's coming to pick it up. He'll get it to my house and eventually or to his house and eventually back to my house. So, gas station, gotta go talk to a banker, try to get some money, go pick up the 66 Ford, that way. <laughs> yeah, right. We got trucks to buy. Okay, these guys are illegally parked out here. Let's get to a gas station, keep rolling. Finally get fuel mileage. It's in. They did 245 miles to empty. Comes to 16.2 miles to the gallon. And that's stop and go traffic, sitting at lights, you know, it's lots of just hills and stuff like that, not even highway. So I bet this would get probably easily 18 on the highway, maybe even a little bit more. Longmire's getting about 15 miles to the gallon. And then you got like all of it. You know what I mean? So, ladies are over getting breakfast. Over there. We're gonna fill the coolers. And we got like 40 miles to this truck. found it. A very nice feller named David put together this truck. He put quite a bit of work into it. I didn't realize how much work he had put into this thing, but check this truck out. Here's the new ride. 66 Ford F100. And uh, to be honest, it's pretty solid. I expected the usual rust and rot, but the cab mounts aren't rotted out of it. The cab corners look pretty decent. There's really not even dents in it. Did you see any big dents or anything, Chad? No. It's got a tow your boat to the lake hitch. It's been painted a couple 15 times. You wanna to try to pop the hood on this bad boy? Now, these normally came with a 246, a 306, or you can get the 352. 
But this one has been swapped with the drivetrain from a 73. Aha! So now we have a 302 with a three speed out of a 73. I guess it'd be a half ton truck. This has got a Summit Racing camshaft in it. It's like a 474 lift, 289 duration, somewhere around there. You could definitely, we'll be able to hear this thing. You'll be able to tell it's got a cam. It's got headers, otherwise it's, it's basically stock. But he replaced the rag joint in it. I guess he did a little bit of brake work. It's got, you know, the old uh, one barrel death cylinder on her still, but he said he put some work into drum brakes. It's got good front tires, and he threw some halfway decent ones in the back. Actually, they might even match, I'm not sure. It's got an aluminum radiator, super starts battery. I mean, basically it looks like I already worked on this thing. <laughs> and then here, this column is flipped around because you had to use this column and the pedals and everything like that from the 73. So this is actually the blinkers over here. But watch this. Oh, where's the exhaust at? Over here? Oh, it's underneath. What do you think? We're we gonna make it home in this? Oh, I think so. Yeah. It's the nicest truck you own. <laughs> it really is, actually. <laughs> well, there's nothing left to do but just jump in it, get back on the route, and just see how this thing does. We got a tackle meter, and uh, oil pieces, water. Oh boy, that's a little, she's a little sloppy. But that's all right. Pretty cute old truck. Okay, well, I'm gonna grab my stuff, transfer it from Longmire into here, and we might actually make it to the venue today. What a nice guy. We're off. I like this little potato potato cam. About as big as you can go on stock valve train. So we got a 66 Ford now and a 66 Chevy on tour. That's pretty cool. This runs good. I haven't really tried the brakes yet. <laughs> I never got them, so I don't expect them, you know? We got mirage. It does smell a little it's not bad, it's just old truck, which I kind of like. Seat's got a lot of, you know, it's like a dang old Davenport. Well, let's get to a gas station and we'll start moving stuff around. I was going to do it there at David's place, but I didn't want to take up his day off. So we're going to go to a fuel station, top this off, get my tools and stuff in here. and. We're going to try to get to Rockingham, North Carolina, I think is the goal today. I'm not even sure how many miles it is. We'll find out here in a minute. Well, we swung into this little country store. We're going to, you know, do the thing, like I say, but they don't have ice and stuff like that. So we're going to go to the next one down the road. I took off in the trusty but rusty Ford. Well, it's not even that rusty. The hood's a little bit. We need a name for it. Longmire wouldn't crank. I think there's something going on with the starter or something, so... We gotta do some troubleshooting. You can turn the key and nothing happens. And I just tried to jump it with the screwdriver and nothing happens. So I gotta do some voltages and things like that. Well, she fired right up again. I We tested for voltage, we had that. I did wiggle the ground a little bit and it's got this rinky-dink uh, disconnect thing on here. Maybe we get rid of that. Look, Chad, look at this. Maybe we get rid of this thing. And just put like a new cable with the real, yeah. 
we just went down some crazy bumpy back roads and it might have you know got loose but hey we're good to go fire it up jessica Give us a little pipe. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right, on the road again. Better do a fuel station. I don't even know what town we're at. Gonna fill her up, and that way we know how many miles we can go. I'm gonna guess 10 miles to the gallon just to start. That's always a safe number. Fuel gauge does not work. However, we're gonna stop by a parts store on the way to Rockin' Tree, Rockin' Cow, Rockin' Ham, whatever that song is. I'm gonna change the oil on this. It's got an old Fram filter in it. I gotta adjust the carb. It's idling at like 1400 RPM. And, uh, other than that, old boy did a good job. Drives decent, the brakes are there. Typical drum brake stuff. But anyway, what I was gonna say is I'm gonna see if they have a universal fuel gauge. Maybe I could just run some wires through the seat crack and have it on the middle of the seat or something. Gotta get some cup holders, air freshener, things like that. 6.7 gallons, she was half full already. She shut long wire off, so we'll see if that'll fire back up. Hopefully we'll see what happens. <laughs> so Mr. Good is a Ford fan and you can tell because of the way that, you know, things are. Just did a little bit of math on the, the old pocket computer box. It's 213 miles today. It's 640 miles back home. So the question then is, is this thing going to run and drive 640 miles? We're gonna do our darndest because it's what I got basically. <laughs> I don't want to leave another vehicle out stranded, so we're going to hit the road right now and kick this thing off. Swinging in to wet the back neck and get some groceries in the belly. We stopped at O'Reilly's to get some parts on the Ford here, some oil and oil filter and stuff. And it died on me right in the parking lot. And I was fiddling around and cranking on it and this and that. It's getting fuel, I got it fired back up. And ever since then, it's been running rough. Uh, I've had a really tough time keeping it running at the lights. And it's either loading up or is it smoking behind me? It is? When you pop on it. Yeah. Blue or black? It's, it's multicolored. Multicolored? <laughs> yeah. I think it might have a massive vacuum leak or something very wrong with the carburetor, which is why Old Feller got it cranked all the way up to 1500 because you can't, it doesn't want to run under that. So we'll have to take a look at that, but we're going to, we haven't eaten. So we're going to get this done and then we'll. Head over to, I think it's a fairgrounds today, Jessica? Uh, Rockingham Speedway. Oh, Speedway, Rockingham Speedway. Well, that'll be pretty good. I've never been there, so that's cool. Wings, that's what I had for lunch. Okay, we're getting ready to hit the road. I got a cup holder center console thing at O'Reilly's. That's great. And Chad, not the other Chad, let me borrow a boom box. So we're cruising in style. Now I can just turn music up real loud and ignore the fact that we have a massive vacuum leak, the timing's wrong, and or there's something going on with the carburetor. We're going to try to get all the way to the venue so we can hang out with you guys that came down. 
Still feel so bad about not making it yesterday, but try it, all right? Let's hit the road, have some fun and cruise. quit once again so I'm gonna leave her in gear use the starter ah, run around battery well I was planning on ignoring you know all of this pretending that it didn't happen until we got to the venue because once again we're running late and we're right we need we're on the, the ragged edge first of all this is Need to fix that. Okay, noted. I'm having massive air fuel issues slash timing issues slash vacuum leak issues. And one of the first things I noticed right away is the fuel bowls are absolutely full. See the side glasses? If I rock the truck, no movement. So this could be just loading up. Fuel bowls are getting full. When cruising speed, we slow down and try to idle this thing. And there's nowhere for that fuel to go. So it goes right through the vent system, right back into the intake, and it's loading it up. So I need to lower the floats, get that down, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the air fuel mixture on this, some sort of summit carb here. And then I got some cracks on my vacuum ports as well. Those could be causing vacuum leaks. I don't have any of that right now, but this is just the overfueling, try to limp this thing into uh, the venue. Well, this unit is completely just look, just toes up the places. There's no more float adjustment left. It's blowing through the vent. I've taken the needle out. There's no obstructions there. The float hanger might be not on, actually. If I keep her just the ears pinned back, you know, Hya! Hya! then it's fine. But the second left throttle pours in, and I think that's what's going on. Got to get some tools. We're going to have to take the top of this. It's probably a 600 CFM. I've never even seen something like this. It's a Looks like a single pumper vacuum used to be electric. That's been deleted on Summit Brown. Also look at this boop, boop. That's pretty neat. I think I have worked on this Well, we're in it And here's the problem number one. This thing's got all sorts of different jets in it We've got a 70 and a 73 and a you know, it's just all Nothing is the same. Also, the front needle and seat assembly is missing the rubber O-ring. This slides into this shaft, or collar, and um, that's why this was just bottomed completely out and torqued, I believe, I'm not sure, but that would prevent most of the fuel from coming out. But as soon as Chad started wrapping on it to see if we had a stuck needle, fuel was just you know, spraying everywhere. So luckily there's an O'Reilly's down the road, or so the gigawatts map says, we're gonna get a different battery cable, because this one is just shot. And we're gonna probably just have to pick up an Edelbroken broken carburetor, because they carry them in stock, and thankfully this is a square bore setup. Should be able to plop that on, hit it with fuel. I'll probably go ahead and get a fuel pressure regulator as well. That might have been a start of the whole problem, is the seats are just getting blown out. So, we're this kind of a sketchy area we're in. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> Thankfully, this one's not getting stolen. We're just gonna have to pack up all the tools again, get the valuables out of the truck, run down, get some stuff, and come back. Oh, and once again, the girls took off in the giveaway car, the new car. They're headed towards Rockingham to try to get the punches. Chad, not this Chad, went to follow them as well. And uh, we're just here, you know, this is the no power steering gang, no power brakes gang. Just trying to make, trying to make things happen. Now we're the no car brake gang. Yeah, now we're the no car gang. It's <laughs> mine's fuel injected. It's, yeah, it's, it's fuel injected and mine has air injected, I guess. 
think the wheels are going to get stolen. Oh, they're going to steal. Well, surprisingly, that store did not have an escrow. this on. Chad's replacing the positive cable that was busted. I forgot to get another positive cable when we were in a hurry, so we're getting the SAD cable that we bought to replace the SAD cable in Longmire instead. And uh, yeah, just water up in there, uh, sure. And then uh, I've got to figure out fuel line. I, I didn't buy a long enough piece, but thankfully I bought a click, 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 regulator. So once we add that in here, Plus the piece I bought, we might have enough fuel line there. I'm assuming this is 12 volt positive. It was just laying from the old choke that got ripped off. And uh, this fit right on the side. I had to buy a stud kit. It's got good action. Snugger down, run the fuel, should fire off. Not an ideal fuel line system set up. Ideally, I'd like to cut this, and, uh, but that's what we got. Edelbrock air cleaner looks nice on that shiny holly. Oh, oh, I just, just burped up some wings there, I think. Anyway, let's go ahead and twist on this, see if it fires up. We're going to have to crank it a minute because it doesn't have any fuel in it. So much better already. We got a flat screwdriver. The fittings, the nut of the fitting itself bottoms out against the top boss of the device, not the surface of the threads. So you can't even get them tight. So we're going to go ahead and just delete that and run it straight to the line and just hope that this pump isn't making more than seven to eight pounds, which it shouldn't. This is just insurance. Junk. Junk. Okay, that's out. We're going to zip tie this line back. 
I was getting into the water pump pulley there. I'm gonna let it run for a second, warm back up. I'll adjust the idle air screws just slightly. Thank you. <laughs> Did you not go around the... That's your last zip tie. <laughs> <laughs> Your last zip tie. <laughs> oh, man, so oh, I bought a bag. You're lucky. All right. Now we're talking. Oh, it's a whole new truck. We just heard from the girls that it's a firm six o'clock. They shut that place down. And that is the current time. Actually, it's after six. So. We didn't make it. Again, I sincerely apologize to all those that came out. I, we're trying. We're just <laughs> we're having the worst luck. I thought this would be the sure way to make it happen. Uh, so if you came out to Rockingham and waited for us, I'm, I'm really sorry. We're still gonna run the official route a lot of folks out on the highway, lawn chairs, stuff like that. So uh, hopefully we still bump into some of you. We're gonna try again tomorrow. If we make it to the motel tonight, no issues. Then I've got a pretty good, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. So instead of 30 to 45 minutes to the venue, now we have like an hour and a half to the motel, which is where we're gonna wrap up tonight, I guess. So Let's see how, uh, See how she does on the road now. Well, there's still a few bucks to work out on the six to six Ford here, but I can tell you right now it's night and day difference with this holiday fuel making happen around here. It doesn't shake and stutter and flood and bang and you know everything that it was doing before basically it's no longer doing it, so that's great. I wish I could have found parts to fix that summit. I thought it was a holly when I glanced at it. Because uh, obviously buying a new car was not a cheap thing to do, but in the long run, probably better off having a car that we can get parts for readily at other parts stores and things of that nature. So, let's uh, hope that the electrical works. We're going to need headlights and taillights here pretty soon. We're going to be driving into the night. Still going to have a fuel gauge, of course. It's got about 45 pounds of oil pressure. It runs at about 180. I don't think it has a thermostat in it. I guess we could check at some point, but it's never been over 180. It runs really cool. That's usually an indication that it doesn't have a thermostat. So, but anyway, we're on the road. That's what counts. In the wrong way. <laughs> Jessica's back here. We're gonna make it official. Yes, sir. What do you got in your hand? We're gonna go with this one. There you go. Yep. Now's a good time to mention if a guy or a gal grabs a sticker like this at vicegripgarage.com, you could get entered for a chance to win that car right there and $5,000 cash. Every $5 gets you an entry. That's for the entire month of June there. We're gonna do bottom middle. I think so. I also mentioned there, whoever wins that car 
I'm willing to buy it right back from you because I am in love and I do not want to let it go. Out. <laughs> what she's trying to say is it's legitimately an amazing car. It really is. We've had zero issues with it. It's got plenty of power. It's got great fuel mileage. Everything works. And well, people love it. I mean, every time we stop, this thing is just getting bombarded. I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool rig, gotta be honest. Guys are over here getting ready to weld on this. They literally have everything in this K5. They just LS swapped this. Got a nice Miller setup, got their tanks, lights, tools. I had lent them this for the power tour so they could go around and help folks by mobile welding. And uh, so when we need, needed a welder, of course, these are the guys I called. Using a vice grip as a hammer, that's approved. Well, big thank you to those guys. This is now fixed. See that, how it's holding on the bottom? It's not gonna rub on that exhaust. This was just really flapping around. So that's all taken care of. We got the fuses fixed and replaced. I, I don't know why that happened. We're gonna have to look into that actually. But now we've got uh, tail lights and brake lights back. I stole a fuse out of a slot that says CB, <laughs> but it doesn't have a CB, so I, I don't know what that runs yet. I guess we'll figure out tomorrow. Uh, Chad cleaned up all the glass on the Ford over here. This thing is just, well, I guess I could say it's running the best it's ever ran since I owned it. Unfortunately, the wiper has just dug a groove into that glass, but I might put sparkulators in this as well. We're definitely gonna change the oil and the filter tomorrow. I don't know how long that's been in there. I don't have any records. There's no annotations or notations or anything like that. So we're gonna do that. We might just do it at the venue or maybe early in the morning. I haven't decided yet, uh, but that's doing pretty decent. Of course, did you put a new air freshener in or? Still good. Still good, okay, so we're, this is fine. And the do car, any issues, complaints? Concerns? One complaint. What's that? Somebody else gets it. Oh, <laughs> she loves this car so much. Do car is doing fantastic. But that's going to do it for tonight. What is this? Day three? Yeah. Day three, and we're in Rockinghamish, North Carolina. So stay tuned. Tomorrow we're going to drive to Concord, North Carolina. I think it's like 75 ish miles. It's our shortest drive, but Listen, with Longmire, Old Buick, and a brand new to us, Ford, we really don't know what's gonna happen. I asked the previous owner, good old feller, nice guy, unknown miles on that 302, so really anything could happen, we're not quite sure. We're gonna try to get an earlier start. We are just bound and determined to get to the event. We wanna show you guys the Midway and do all that stuff and meet all of you fans. It's been so wonderful. Met a lot of you tonight actually that just came out to the motel. That was really cool. But anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all very much. We'll see you very soon.